introduce to you a very dear friend, Dr. Marcia K. Hermanson, who is a professor of Islamic studies at Loyola University. She earned her PhD from the University of Chicago. A linguist of our eminence, Dr. Hermanson studied, trained, and researched 10 languages, which are Arabic, Persian, Urdu, Punjabi, French, Spanish, German, Dutch, Turkish, and Bhasha Malaysia. Dr. Marcia's topic today is adab, that is, moral excellence in the Sunnah of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now, Dr. Marcia. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem wa salamu alaykum I'm going to speak on adab o akhlaq the holy prophet's example of moral excellence I'd like to welcome you all to this year's Milad and Nabi conference organized by the Naqshbandiya Foundation for Islamic Education over the past Six years, mashallah, we have celebrated this occasion in Chicago. And during those six years, the ladies of the community have consistently supported this conference and really attended in um, great numbers. And so it's in their honor today that we're having this special uh, section for the ladies of the community. And I've been requested to speak on the topic of adab. So I'd like to say a little bit about the word adab. And I'm also going to talk about akhlaq and the relationship between these two concepts as illustrated in the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And maybe I will, inshallah, also add a little bit of uh, Sufi commentary on the concepts of adab and akhlaq. Now, if we look at the books that have been written uh, by the scholars of Islam concerning the moral excellence and the virtues of the Holy Prophet throughout the centuries, we find the word adab being used especially with regard to his habits. And most of you are probably familiar with the fact that in most of the Islamic languages, and by Islamic languages, I mean Arabic, Persian, Urdu, although I know that there are many people today who say that English should also be included in the Islamic languages because so many of the books about Islam and the books that are spreading Islamic knowledge today are written in English. But in any case, those um, languages that had been influenced by Arabic use the word adab, uh, usually to refer to courtesy, manners, proper behavior, good upbringing, uh, culture, and even in a kind of broader sense to literature. To possess adab is to be truly cultured in a way which embraces not only the mind, but the body and the soul as well. Adab means being polite before elders, recognizing the innate hierarchy in human values, knowing when to speak and when to remain silent, how to stand and sit politely, and how to act correctly in all situations. There is a direct connection between sunnah and adab. There are many hadith, for example, the hadith that says, respect the elder person, or the hadith that says stand up when a senior person arrives and don't sit down again until they have been seated, which teach behaviors known as adab directly. In addition to harmonious human relationships which are preserved through following proper adab, spiritual blessing or barakah emanates from our everyday acts when they are consciously based on the model of the Prophet. Following the practices of the outer sunnah helps us to cultivate attitudes of humility, charity, nobility, and truthfulness as displayed in the life of the Prophet. In addition, adab may be considered an aspect of the inner sunnah, 
or the greater jihad against the false ego or nafs in its negative sense. The adab of proper comportment or behavior with respect to others is a way of refining the inner attention, which can then be directed to practices such as zikr or recollection of one's relationship to the divine. Adab is a favorite word among the Sufis. Perhaps you've heard about the book called Adab al-Muridin, or Proper Conduct for the Disciples, which was written by a Sahuardi. Here, Adab, or the proper way of behaving, becomes an aspect of spiritual discipline. The idea of discipline, whether it's a skill, an art form, or a spiritual practice, is to cultivate a high degree of care and attention while performing an action. It may be a means to humble the ego, but it's also a way to become, if I may say, more natural at other levels of one's being. For example, mastering an art, such as archery or sewing, might seem very rigid and difficult and artificial when you first try to attain results. But with practice, skill, and ease, you will achieve not only results, but while you're doing the action, you will have a sense of balance, of being at one with a greater power. This aspect of naturalness is embodied in our second concept of virtue or moral excellence, which is related to the term akhlaq. The Arabic word khuluk, meaning virtue, is found more explicitly than adab in the Islamic sources. For example, the Quran addresses the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. Indeed, you are of a great character. And a famous hadith says, Innama bu'attu li utammima makaram al akhlaq. I was sent as a prophet to fulfill the noble virtues. The term khuluq is derived from the Arabic root halaka, which means created. Thus, we can understand that the meaning of akhlaq refers to the intrinsic or natural or fitri basis of character. This great character, the idea of great character, is a gift from Allah, as the Quran says. It was only by God's grace that you, O Prophet, were gentle with them. Had you been stern and fiery of heart, they would have dispersed from around you. So pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult with them in their aff in affairs. Thus, virtues such as forbearance and gentleness are recognized as coming from the grace of Allah. The process of adab is a type of discipline which may be absorbed from the environment in a traditional Islamic family and culture. It may be deliberately inculcating during, inculcated during a child's upbringing, or it may be acquired through the efforts of the person themselves. In fact, the adab of the Sufis might be thought of as a kind of extra practice, a kind of nawafil, beyond the adab of everyday relationships. In all of these cases, we might say that there's an element of what is sometimes called jalal, or majesty. Jalal in the sense of action, mastery of oneself, disciplining one's baser instincts. There's both an active jalali and a receptive Jamali, aspect to the acquisition of moral excellence. The molding of good character and the refinement of moral excellence is developed through remembering Allah and reciting the beautiful names of Allah. Al-Ghazali said that the human being must strive to acquire whatever is possible of the divine attributes and to adorn oneself with their beauty. For in this way, they can become lordly. That is, they can become closer to Allah and seek to become a